Hi, some of you people out there are going to come visiting my art studio, and I thought I'd have a little chance to tell you about what my art is about and who I am. I was raised in the Bronx, and I had the opportunity to go to Music and Art High School and then to the School of Visual Arts on a Fine Arts Scholarship. I was classically trained as a fine artist, and I use the term personal art rather than fine because I thought all my art was fine because I ended up being out in the world of advertising as the first woman art director. And while I did jobs for people, I still did it 100% giving them the best that I could. But when you come visit my art studio, which is in Saugerties, New York, 13 Charles Batch Road, and you can really GPS Woodstock Museum because I'm on the same property as Woodstock Museum. It might be easy to get there. You will come and find that you'll see me as a working artist. It's not like a gallery situation. Uh, I wanted to let you know what art was like in a personal art studio. It's a little different than when you go to a gallery. So I'm going to take you through some pieces. Uh, one is my oldest piece. This is a Singer sewing machine. I won an award at Park Chester uh, Art Festival for it. Uh, I also had the wonderful opportunity to show that piece at the Singer Sewing Machine 100th Anniversary. That particular machine, it's a spiritual piece, was actually a machine that my mother won when she was 10 years old for making this dress by hand. Uh, it's a not for sale and it's going to say NFS. So I have a spiritual connection to all my art. I'm not one who thinks about whether it's going to sell or not. It's just something I moved to do, or in this case, was a school project. I most work in watercolors, although I'm a multimedia artist, and this is not only a watercolor, it also has sewing involved and metallic pieces, which are actually sewn on there. Uh, I love watercolors. I find it's the most challenging. It's considered the most difficult art form. Uh, the way a watercolor it works is you usually put the lightest color down first because each color overlaying the other color makes the color deeper and deeper. And you can't go backwards like you can in oil paints where you can put white on top of a dark color. It doesn't work that way. The initial white is usually the color of the paper itself. It's always meant to be transparent. Although in art, you really have no limitations. You can do whatever you want, but uh, the Chinese came along, came along with the Chinese white, and they attempt to put white over, but it never will completely cover. They're really pretty much transparent colors. Uh, the thing about working in watercolors, is, as I was classically trained, was to finish all my watercolors for the day, never pollute the water. So at the end, I usually have a lot of watercolor paper around, and whatever colors I have left, I throw onto the different paper, and that's the beginning of my next pieces. I have a machine. It's called an Epson printer. It's archival. Archival may not mean much to some people, but to collectors it means a whole lot, and particularly to museums. It means it's done on paper that's pH neutral and will not disintegrate. Uh, some people produce ephemeral art, and they are known for that, and that's a different kind of process. It's, it's usually taped for historical purposes, but people who collect and want to put up art in a gallery or in their home would prefer it to be archival, which really means it's going to be around for thousands of years, hopefully. This particular print uh, happens to be two photographs that I took. I'm also a photographer uh, and a videographer and filmmaker. And I meshed the two because my cat had been dying and I felt that these two pieces worked with each other and it's my memory of the cat and my time together. That cat was very meaningful to me. And I, I, if you look closely, you'll see that the eyes of the cat sort of mesh to the eyes of my other photograph. So I guess you could say it's a self-portrait or a family portrait. This would be typical of uh, an unframed piece, something I also want to explain to you. Uh, frames cost a lot of money. We have a complete frame shop where I am in the studio, 
and you pay a lot extra for a beautiful frame. However, some people who like to collect have metal files or places that they can keep the artwork and they're perfectly capable of having it framed at some other point in their life and they will buy it unframed and save a lot of money. And if they want me to frame it, we have a great selection of frames to choose from. Now oils typically have been the most long lasting. Uh, the reason is because uh, the paints themselves have mineral spirits. Uh, not, they don't fade. Uh, this particular piece, uh, you might look at it and say, well, it's a very small piece, and maybe you think it's less money than some of the others. But actually, I worked with a, a gentleman, and we invented our own frame for it. It's done without any hinges. Uh, the frame itself cost me $500. I never, ever threw out a DVD or CD that ever came in the mail to me, or my husband's a videographer, and I had the opportunity to draw on the ones that unfortunately were errors. I refused to make new garbage. Now, as it turns out, because these are recycled, and the backs of them are all kinds of funny things written here, but I call it 10,000 faces, and I have thousands of these, and, and there are thousands of faces. You can get something as beautiful as this framed, and I have hundreds of frames there to choose from, and these are most, probably my most, most reasonable art that I can sell and offer you. So it's up to you to figure out whether you're a collector or whether you're somebody who wants to decorate your house. I have a piece I calligraphed. It's called Three Reasons to Buy Art. You love the art, and of course, that's without question. You love the art, you fall in love with it, you want to buy it. The other is you love the artist, and there are sometimes connections. You know the artist, you begin to find out about their personal life, you're taken by them, and you're also learning about the painting. When you come to my studio, please ask me about it. Why did I do certain things? And the third reason is, like a fine wine, it gets better with age. Or another way to put it is it becomes an investment. All art appreciates. If you can find a museum or a place they're donated to afterwards, it's a nonprofit, years later, you will always take off more you'll, from your taxes more money than you ever spend for it, which is why art became a big investment concept. It's not why an artist becomes, a, becomes an artist. You, somehow you're born an artist, and you feel what you do. So welcome to my studio. I look forward to greeting you. I'll feed you, I'll give you a drink, and we'll have some fun. Thank you.